Hello everyone. In this video, I'm going to show you a tool called Private GPT that lets you chat with your documents, your private documents using a local large language model. This way, your data never leaves your computer and you can privately chat and talk and ask questions with the documents that you want to keep private and away from commercial providers like OpenAI. So let's get started. So this tool is an open source tool. I'm going to provide you a link for this GitHub repo in the description below. But the about section of this repo says interact privately with your documents using the power of GPT, 100% privately, no data leaks. Now, if you're worried about your data being leaked or your data being used by, you know, some companies that is offering you certain AI services, this is the perfect tool. Using this tool, you can be assured that your data will not go outside of your laptop, right? So it's very interesting. And this is very interesting to me. So I gave it a try and I want to show how it works to you. This will also be a step-by-step -step tutorial on how to make this work. So let's get going. Before we actually start using the tool, let's look at how this tool works. So first of all, you'll save the documents that you want to ingest in a folder and then uh, ingest.py script uses Langchain and other tools to parse the document and create embeddings locally using um, some embedding models. And then it stores the result in a local vector database right here, right? In this case, Chroma is our uh, vector store. So the first part is you ingest, create embeddings and store the embeddings in a vector database. Secondly, there's a script to actually start asking questions and that is private gpt.py. And what this script does, it uses a local large language model or LLM based on GPT for all or Lama CPP. Now this local model will understand the questions and create answers for you. The context for the answers, the data for the answers will come from the vector database where your data is stored. And it's done by uh, using a similarity search so that depending on what question you're asking, the right answer can be fetched from your data. And that's it. That's basically it, right? So that's a quick overview of how this all works. And now we're ready to actually start using the tool. So let's start by cloning the repo. So let's clone the repo. I'm going to copy the link to the repo and then I'll go to my shell. So once I'm in the shell, I will get clone the repo. Uh, let's go inside the repo and let's look at the files. Let me open this in a IDE. I'm going to use VS code. Now the repo says the first thing I need to do is to install the requirements. So I'm going to do just that pip3 install requirements. Before we install, let's look at the requirements file. We have all of these requirements that we need to install. So the next step will be to install this using the command right here. But I'm going to change this a little bit. As you can see, I changed the pip to pip 3.10 uh, just to be really specific because this uh, this tool requires Python 3.10 at least, right? So I'm going to be specific and say pip 3.10. Okay, now everything is installed. The next step will be to copy the example env file or environment file into uh, .env file. So the example env file is right here, example.env. Uh, we'll just rename this to .env so that we can start using it. Um, and as you can see, the things that we'll need to change in this uh, file are mostly these two lines, model path and embedding model name, right? So you can stick with the embeddings model that is already defined here 
And what happens is when you first run this uh, ingest command, which we'll do in a bit, uh, a model to embed the documents will be downloaded depending on what you put right here. Um, but the model path, this is the model for the large language model, and we actually need to download that ourselves. And we'll do that in a bit. But for now, let's just uh, save this environment file. So the next step that you'll need to do is to add some documents to this source documents folder. The source documents folder already has a, a transcript file from the State of the Union, but we want our own data. That's the whole point of using private GPT, right? We want to use this on our personal data. So I'm just gonna delete this State of the Union, and I have some files uh, that'll add to this folder some dummy files, you know, about my uh, travel logs and vacation logs and finance logs, right? Just to simulate my private notes and documents. So let me do that. Let me add those files here. Okay, so I have added a couple of files. So the first file is uh, my finance gpt.md and I've just added some, uh, you know, notes about my finance, right? I spent this much on my vacation, this much uh, in car maintenance, this much in cell phones, da da da. Just to give you a sense of, you know, what kind of private notes I would add, right? Another document I have here is travel.md. Uh, I just have some logs from my trip to Paris, um, you know, what I did, what, are, what was the highlights, trip to Barcelona, uh, what did I eat, and things like that, right? So, let's think of these files as my private files. So now the source document is added. The next step is to ingest the document using the ingest.py uh, command, like it says right here, right? And just to give you a sense, you can add all of the data types listed here, right? CSV, docx, email, EPUB, HTML, markdown, PDF, PowerPoint, TXT. So you're not just limited to um, markdown files. You can add any documents in here. So next step is to ingest the documents and we're actually ready to do that, right? Uh, I'm gonna say Python 3.10 specifically because I have a few Python uh, versions installed in my machine. So I'm gonna say Python 3.10 ingest.py. Okay, the ingestion is complete. As you can see right here, it was pretty quick. Now you can run private gpt.py to query your documents, right? Now, before we do this, we actually need to do download the model files. Um, and before we do that, let's create a new folder here called models. And this is the folder where, where we'll add the models. And to get the models, the large language models that we'll need, you can go to this website, gpt4all.io, uh, scroll down, and in the model explorer, you'll see a few different models uh, that you can choose from. Feel free to try some of these models because depending on what model you use, you'll get different kind of outputs. You'll get different speed of output, all right? Um, so I'm gonna choose the GPT-4 all 13B and download it. A few moments later. After I've downloaded the model file, I will put that into the models folder. And one thing that you'll need to make sure of is whatever model you downloaded, make sure you add the right name for the model in the environment file, right? So before the default name was DGML GPT-4 all groovy because I downloaded a different model. I'm gonna say, this is the name of my model, which matches the file in the models folder. Okay, and we are ready to move on to the next step, which is to ask questions. And to do that, I'll say Python 3.10. Once again, to be specific about the Python version, I need 3.10 and say private gpt.py. As you can see, it has found the model file and it's doing some work. Now this is gonna be slow, you know, because this is a local LLM and I have only certain amount of memory. Now, by the way, I have a 16 gigs of RAM. I'm on a M2 Mac. 
and depending on what machine you have you know you can download a bigger model or a smaller model but looks like I am ready to enter a query as you can see right here I want to ask how much did I spend on car tires how much did I spend on car tires this is written in one of the documents I ingested so let's see if private GPT can find the answer to this once again it's gonna take some time and to make it faster feel free to close out some of the memory hogging or resource hogging applications that you have running and I'm starting to see some response here uh, in May you spent $1,000 replacing your car tires right so it's given me the answer uh, and once again it's showing me some logs like the question was this answer was this these are the source documents it found the answer from da 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 right so okay it gave me an answer but let's verify right let's look at the uh, doc source document like it says uh, myfinancegpt.md and let's see if I actually spent one thousand dollars in uh, for my tires and just like the answer said I replaced my car tires for one thousand dollars right so it was true right I did spend one thousand dollars in my tire so it got that right uh, so it's working amazing next step let's ask another question now because I have a file about travel let's say I forgot where did I eat this really yummy dish when I was traveling uh, in Barcelona right so I want to say where did I eat the paella in Barcelona let's say I want to share the name of the restaurant with my friends but I forgot the name right let's ask and see if private GPT can give this for us all right and we have our answer the question was where did I eat the paella in Barcelona and the answer was at seven portes so it did give me an answer also citing the source documents so it found the answer in travel.md let's look at travel.md which is different than the uh, finance file we looked at earlier so travel.md um, trip to Barcelona I had some of the best paella at seven portes right so it did get the answer right again so this is just a um, quick demo of what you can do with private GPT and a local LLM and ingesting your own documents privately. But you can really start seeing the benefits once you have thousands of files, right? And you don't want to look at individual files to get the answer, but you can just ask private GPT for an answer. So this is basically the demo, right? Hopefully you learn something new. And I hope you can come up with some interesting use cases uh, for using this tool. And even if not, you can confidently ask questions against your own data privately without it going to the internet or without it going to companies like OpenAI. So I hope you like this video. I'm gonna be doing more videos in this topic, private LLM, open source LLM, local LLMs. So if you wanna stay tuned and stay updated, feel free to subscribe to this channel and I hope to see you soon. Goodbye.